So I've learned with any friendship, whether it's relationship, kinship, anything with ship on the end of it is hard. <laughs> so, like you said, with treating people or showing people how to love you, you don't have to put up with. I mean, it's all right in a relationship. You're gonna have to compromise, but I'm not. Oh, yeah. sur- I'm not surrendering no more. Right. So either you're gonna accept me and we work on certain things, but I'm not going out my way and doing all that no more. I'm just at a place right now where I am okay with who I am. I have friends I can call on. And yeah, we all get to that point where we want that person to hold us and to shower us and do all that, but it's just too much. It's just, it's a lot where people just, just saying that this is me. You know, people put up in the beginning when you're dating somebody, they tell you everything that they they think you want to hear just to get you. And then once they get you, that's it. There's no more of what they used to do and all that type of stuff. Then become, and here comes the lying, and here comes the, it's just too much. So I would rather just be by myself. You really would just rather be by yourself, rather than deal with that, yeah. you're saying. Okay. I think one of, the, one of the key things that I've learned when it comes to dating someone is what I, what I try to do now that I'm older <laughs> is I realize that that even if it's a friendship or if it's a lover, being in a relationship, or anything, it's the consistency of what I want. The, th- the things that I want from my lover are the same things that I want from my friend, the same mm-hmm. things that I want from my mm-hmm. friend. And one thing that's key to me is when I was involved in relationships and now that I look back on it, it's just like I didn't I didn't care, you know. I, I cared, but it wasn't really high up on my priority list. Like if you come from a single parent household. Just like I grew up in a two-parent household, then most of the people that I was dating, they come from a single-parent household. But when I was younger, that, that was something that didn't even enter my mind, you know, if this person comes from a two-person, a two-parent household or a one-parent household. Because looking back on it, it 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 you all are coming from different areas. Although you know that you would you didn't grow up in the same household, but then it's just like this person only knows love from this point of view. But do you think that's fair? Yeah, it's fair to you and it's fair to the other person because if I grow up in a, in a two-parent household and I see a mother and a father loving each other and that's my interpretation of love and then I'm dating someone that was brought up by their mother only and they just see a mother's love, they don't see the interaction between a mother and a father, then they see different love than I see when I'm growing up. And if I don't acknowledge that at the beginning of a relationship, it's a problem because like Jason was saying, it's just like, you know, you want people to love you a certain kind of way. And if I've seen a mother loving a father, then this is the love that I'm used to seeing. And then when I get involved in a relationship with somebody that just used to see a mother loving a son, then it's just like, okay, then when I'll go all out for your birthday and I'm going and I'm setting up the room and I'm, you know, we're not going to the house. We got a hotel room. I got a hotel room and I done fixed it up and I went and got you all these gifts and I went and got you the balloons and the whole nine yard and all the gifts and everything. <clears throat> because that's what I've seen growing up. My mother, when it's her birthday, when it's her anniversary or when it's my father's birthday or when it's their anniversary or Christmas stuff, that's what they do for each other. But then when this person who's brought up by their mom, you know, my birthday come around and all I get is a card, you know, a card on a pillow. So then it's just like, but ma- where's but everything Like at? you said, that's all that they know. So by you all being together, maybe you can show them. But, wait, but that's different. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying now. It's just like, you know, but growing up and when you're involved in a relationship and if you don't look at that, if you don't take it into consideration at the beginning of a relationship, then it'll mess up the relationship because I'm not looking at it like, we grew up in two different households and you know, I'm mom and dad and he just a mama. All I'm looking at is I don't went and bought you all this stuff for your birthday, then you just <laughs> get me a card. But then I had to come to the point in my life where I say, like I shared with Jason, it's just like just because he only bought me a card doesn't mean that he doesn't love me just as much as I love him. But because my definition of what love is and how love is supposed to act and how you're supposed to show love was different than his and his, and then our definition was the same, then I perceive that to be, you don't love me. But looking back on it, it's just that, yes, he does love you. He just don't love you the way that you mm-hmm. love him because y'all came up on the two definitions of love. And so for you, for you, though, is that is that okay? Or at what point is... 
the difference, something that you say, okay, maybe we should part ways. Because to me, that kind of lends itself to what I say about letting someone know how you want to be loved. If you're a person who really, truly, who getting all the hoopla and the flowers and the balloons and the cake and ice cream is a big deal for your birthday, and you don't get that, so how long do you go on where that's okay? You know, and like you say, I know in relationships, there is compromise on both sides. So at what point is something a, a, a deal breaker, so to speak? Well, it's like after yeah. when you're dating, before you make it that step in saying, okay, we're going to be in a relationship, I think that's the part of dating so you'll get to know the dislikes and the, and the likes so you'll know that later on in, in the relationship. Yeah, but see, but that's the thing. It's just like you're getting to know them, and then this is your first birthday. So I think to answer your question, it'd be like three or four birthdays okay. because by now <clears throat> you know that, okay, I'm going all out for your birthday, and, you know, you know, first year you get me a car, then the next year for your birthday I'm going all out, then the next year you get me a car, then the next year I'm going all out for your birthday, then the next year you get me a car. Then, you know, it's just like, okay, do you have to say something? But what happened before was... Once you did all that for the birthday, and then for the birthday, your first birthday, and then they got you the card, I didn't stick around for the second birthday. I didn't you stick just around for the second. It's just did like, you tell them what your expectation that, and I just, was? You know, just just in the relationship. Okay. So then it's just like, now that I'm older and looking back on that, it's just like, well, that was my opportunity to teach exactly. them what I wanted. But because we are so mad and we're so upset, right. we don't give the person the benefit of the doubt and stick around long enough right. to teach them right. and to let them know what we expect from them. Right. And again, though, and that's a good point, I believe that that does come with, with age and maturity and with um, learning yourself. Because, you know, I'm, there was a time when I probably would have responded like that. Now, today, I wouldn't. I would say, you know what? On birthdays, this birthdays are really special to me, so I like to, you know, do it up, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the, like I said, that's the obligation that you, in a relationship that you have to to each other. Yeah, but then and then we all get to. I don't know about who I say we all, but I think everybody gets to the point where we just want we just want the person to do without us having to tell yeah. them. It's just I just want to see what you're gonna do without me having to tell you. Because if I have to tell you, I want you to do this and I want you to do that, then it, 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 when you do it, yeah, it does, I don't feel the same way as though if you would have done it, then I open the door and it's like, wow, you did all of this. It's just like, wow, you did all this because I told you to do right. it. And that's, that's a valid point. But I, th I think, especially as we are all getting older, I think that because people may have gone through a long period of their life without knowing or not having someone to teach them, excuse me, or to tell them, you know, what they want or how they want it done. So I think that if it's some, if there are other qualities that things like that, there are certain things that you can teach and say, hey, this is how I like it. Mm -hmm. um, and we could go on and on about this forever, which we probably will go on and on about this some more. Well, right with all now. that saying, you see people come in all different shapes and forms, so that is what we're here to talk about on The Dish. So join us next week. We're running out of time. Thank you all for listening. Hit us up on Facebook. Bye. Yeah, what she said. Also, <laughs> also have a little taste of The Dish. And bye, Eddie Law. <laughs> We'll make you a plate to go. Uh, the I, dish. Because I know you got a ride. <laughs>